going on guys? I hope that the uh, <laughs> stabilization works. Uh, so we upgraded to the new iPhone, it finally came in. As you can tell, it's fast. Um, so we're on the iPhone 13 Pro Max, one terabyte in gold. So yeah, as you know with the old camera, we had to constantly keep deleting data off it because I never thought I'd actually require this much data. Uh, it turns out I do. So uh, we're on our way to Dawson's Creek again. Uh, we got a call from a customer we dealt with before. Uh, ICBC sent us out to Dawson's Creek and we're taking a truck down to Surrey. Um, at least I, I think it's Surrey. Uh, I'd have to look at the address on the BOL. Um, so we're picking up a 2016 Ford F350. Uh, it has no keys though. Uh, the interior is able to get access to, but no keys. So what we got to do is we got to put take the uh, what the hell is it? It's, there's a switch you can hit that will force the truck or allow the truck to unlock the shifter to go into neutral. Um, it's at a tow yard, so they know how to do that. I'm assuming. And they're gonna load it with their flat deck. So they're just getting the flat deck out and they're gonna lay it on there and let the truck roll into my trailer. Uh, so hopefully everything goes easily. We're doing that tomorrow morning between nine and 10. It's now 4.18 p.m. and it's warm. It's insane. Up here normally it doesn't get this warm. It's plus five up here in uh, 100 Mile House. Well, we're still another like 10 minutes away from 100 Mile or 15 minutes away, something like that. And uh, but we left late today. Uh, I pretty much didn't get home until very late yesterday. Uh, had to go get a few things done. Nothing for the business, just all personal shit. And uh, didn't get home till late, so I just slept in. So I woke up around 3.30 uh, today. Wow, that's a, that's, a, that's a load. Jesus, big one of those big mining dump trucks. But uh, yeah, we're gonna make our way there. Uh, we, we pretty much woke up an hour and a half ago, uh, had some food, breakfast, coffee, we got our Tim's obviously, and we're on our way to Dawson's Creek. We're gonna get there probably around, I'd say 1 a.m., maybe midnight. Well, 2 a.m. Dawson's Creek time, but 1 a.m. our time, because once you go over the pass, it switches to mountain time and no longer Pacific time. Uh, so, yeah, there's an hour jump in that situation. But uh, all good, we'll get there on two, we'll go to sleep, we'll get our seven hours, eight hours, we get loaded, and then uh, we'll just dart back. We'll probably get back to the house in Kamloops um, before we have to shut down for the night. It is, I do have 13 hours of drive time in Canada, but I don't think, well, we would have to look at it. We, we could take the Coke now, the Coke is open uh, for us. There's no longer a, you have to be over a certain weight crap anymore. Uh, which was stupid because if you're one kg under that weight, they were like, no, you can't take this highway. You have to be over 11,000 uh, kg, which is about 26, well, it's, uh, I think it was 11,748. Odd number, but uh, I think it was because of the chain up number. They want you to have a chain if you were going to go on there. But uh, they pretty much said if you weren't near that or over it, if you were on it or over it, you weren't allowed to go on that highway. So it is what it is. What can you do? But now they unrestricted that, and now it's open to whoever wants to take the highway. So we're gonna be taking the Coke with this nice Ford truck. I don't know the condition of the truck. I know the customer I dropped off to, uh, The if you remember in a, a previous video, if it's been uploaded, I'm not 100% sure if it's been uploaded yet. Um, but it's, uh, well, has that truck actually been uploaded yet? Have we uploaded that video? I know we did the G35. It's kind of funny, I'm actually having this conversation with you guys here. Uh, slow down, ice is no, drive with care. We're still plus three, so there's no ice. Um, at least no ice on a major highway. But uh, I don't know, maybe it wasn't uploaded yet. But we had an F350 from Copart in Edmonton come all the way back to Vancouver. And uh, that's who we're taking it to again for ICBC. And I think they're using this truck's mechanical parts to fix that truck. Because um, it was pretty minty on the body, apart from a few things were fucked up, but pretty straightforward and easy. This one is a repo or it's a car accident, I'm not sure, but there's no keys. So that tells me that it might be a repo. Um, no keys tend to be a repossession, but most repo guys, 
guys, when they repossess a vehicle, tend to actually go and get keys from the dealership. Uh, at least that's what I do when I repossess cars. And yes, I have repoed cars before. Uh, it is not that hard to do. Just find the car, pick it up. It's usually an easy thousand bucks in your pocket. Uh, as long as it's like within the Kamloops area, I don't, I've done repossessions before. It's not bad. Uh, most people give up their vehicles and they give you the keys. Once I put it on my trailer, I tend to like tell them like, hey, I'm gonna charge you 1500 bucks to get a key or you can just hand me over the key. Most people just hand over the key. Um, it's a shitty situation, like I hate doing it, but at the end of the day, uh, don't borrow money against a vehicle that you can't afford. And I know the bank says yes, the bank will always give you money, but live within your means. As much as I hate to say that to people. But um, yeah, I think this was a repo and they just never got keys for it. So what we might do, if we cannot get the truck in the neutral, I might just go to the Ford dealership because there's one there um, and just give them the VIN and uh, show them my paperwork and then they'll give me a key. To, not one to start it, but it will allow me to loosen everything up so like I can put the truck in neutral. Uh, it will turn over, but it will shut down for security reasons unless I get the truck programmed. Uh, but it's enough to get the cab unlocked and enough to get the ignition turned over and let me put the truck in neutral and do what I need to do. Those are about 50 to 75 bucks to do that. Um, the programming is what costs the big bucks, like $250, $300 to do. So it is what it is. Uh, we're driving into a shit show right now, apparently. We were driving in the nice weather. Now we're driving into a blizzard. Nice. Whatever. We'll keep going. We'll hammer down. We got about, oh, I'd say probably another eight hours, maybe uh, nine hours of driving left to get the Dawson. Hopefully this storm is just here in 100 Mile and it blows over. Uh, we might have to stop into uh, a place in Prince George. Uh, to get fuel as well as to get a battery booster. Uh, mine has said enough. Um, I it didn't like doing running the pump because if you remember, I used it to run the old the new pump, uh, and it didn't like doing it because that pump pulls 25 amps uh, constant current uh, to run. At least I think it's 25. The fuse is 25, so I'm assuming you can pull up to 25 amps. But I didn't like doing it for a long periods of time. It take five, six minutes of constant pull. Those things are not really built for that, to be honest. And same with winching. I was using it for a winch. Um, and uh, again, they're not really meant to do that kind of stuff. They're meant to get a car started, run for 15, 20 seconds, and then that's it. Uh, they weren't meant to be sustainable loads for 10, 15 minutes, things like that. They're not built for that. Uh, they're not designed for that. So we just gotta get that done. But once the winch plate comes in for the trailer and once the toolbox comes in for the trailer, we can wire up that trailer to function on its own power with the seven pin system. And uh, also a solar panel I'm putting on top of the box so the batteries always stay, char always stay charged. Um, so yeah, it is what it is. We got the trailer back, it's fixed. Um, quote, quote. Uh, it's already on off to a good start. And wow, I feel congested all of a sudden. Don't know why. I don't have coronavirus. I just got over it, okay? Relax. And so I had the Omicron variant. The first time I caught COVID in three years. I haven't caught it before. And I caught it. Don't know where, don't know how. I haven't been around anyone. So maybe I touched a gas pump where someone was infected. I don't know. Um, I normally wear gloves when I pour diesel. Anyone who actually pours diesel knows, like, you never grab that pump with your bare hand. You'll regret that life immediately. Um, so normally I wear gloves. I'm not sure where I got it from. Um, don't really go into gas stations. Don't really go into restaurants. Usually try to stick the drive through and things like that. So, could have been a restaurant. Uh, I ordered from, from, could be, I don't know. Could be that my wife went somewhere and got it. But it is what it is. It wasn't too bad. It was fairly easy to get over. I had like a day of like uh, fever. I don't think it even exceeded 100. Um, and then I had a headache, sore throat for a day and then just sore throat, sore throat and a headache on the second day. But pain meds immediately took care of that. A little bit of Halls, two ibuprofen. We were mint for the day. And uh, by day four, I had nothing. So, 
and then I tested last week, Monday last week, I was negative, and uh, yeah, so back to work, we had a week off, or two weeks off, I think it was, like, I got it during the New Year, so two weeks off, because I just got back to work uh, today, so I think today's the 20th, so yeah, over two weeks off. Um, as you know, when you book loads and then you can't take loads, you have that little grace period of like three days where you're trying to find stuff, because you're not just getting a load booking the same day and going to go get it. Uh, most jobs aren't like that except for hot shots. Um, so I had a lot of customers calling me like, hey, can you do this? Hey, can you do that? I told them, no, I have coronavirus. Unless it's contactless pickup and contactless drop off, I don't want to get infected. Uh, so most of them actually waited. Uh, a lot of these customers like the way I do my job. And a lot of them said, you know what, let's postpone it. Let's wait till you're back on the road and uh, then we'll get the jobs done. And that's what happened right now. I have a job, I have like eight jobs right now. Um, just they all piled up and I'm trying to catch up on them. So I had a job going to Calgary from Vancouver yesterday, or not yesterday, a couple days ago. We picked it up in Vancouver. Uh, was not in the mood to do a video, kind of did one video and just was not feeling it. Uh, for those who don't know, like if you, when you're sick, you don't feel like doing this kind of crap. So I just, I started a video, realized I just, the energy wasn't there. The motivation was not there. And I just didn't want to do it, did not have the drive. And I was like, you know what? It's just going to be a crap video. I don't want to put out content that's crap or something with a pissed off mood or just annoyed. Because I was not, I was quite annoyed that morning. Like I was not like mad in a sense of like being sick or just not, it was just a real crappy day. Uh, I had pretty much run into bullshit after bullshit after bullshit. And I just kept eating a bullshit sandwich for all that time. And it was just like, I picked up my trailer after getting repaired. Turns out the tire was destroyed um, and had a $400 bill to fix a tire. And okay, it would have been a couple hundred bucks, but I'm a firm believer that these tires are trash on this trailer. And I've been through that multiple times now. Um, they're China tires, they're 10 plies, they're absolute flaming hot garbage. Now, when I upgrade tires, I upgrade to a 14 ply, US made or Vietnam made or Japan made tire. I will not buy a China tire ever, ever will I ever buy one. Uh, so we got a tire from Vietnam. Uh, all the way from Vietnam, that's a funny joke. But anyhow, um, we put a 14 ply tire on it. I was gonna do all four, but the shop only had the one. And uh, so I was like, well, I guess I just got the one done because it's the only one that failed. Um, I guess I ran over a U-bolt system thing and it just, the holes are too close to each other to repair. And I honestly didn't want to repair that tire anyways. I was just gonna order four of those tires and then bring it in the following week and get them all done. I ordered those tires, they're on their way. They're not sure when they're gonna land, but they're in they're in transit. Let's just say that. They're from Chilliwack. Um, they're coming up, they're in transit, they're on their way. So we're just have to wait and see when they get here. And then we'll take the trailer and get it done. Uh, it's almost $2,000 to upgrade this trailer to 14 ply tires. Uh, I know some of you are about freaking out in, your, in the chat or in the comment section or probably in your head uh, going, oh my God, that's so expensive. Why would you ever pay that much money for 14 ply tires? They used to be cheap. I used to be able to get a set of 14 ply tires for 800 bucks for the tires and about 250 to 300 bucks to have them installed, balanced, and then uh, uh, TPMS put in. Now I do have TPMS put in those tires, so I can my truck can actually tell me if the, if I start getting a flat tire on the trailer. If you've never had that before, absolutely get it. It's amazing. You don't have to go check your tires and all that stuff. And it's just it's sweet. It's nice. It's classy. It's just mm, mm. it's one of those things where you don't know what it's like to have it until you have it, but you're sure fucking happy you have it when you do. Uh, we're driving to an absolute blizzard at the moment, and. Uh, we were doing 110, now we're slowed down because there's a guy with a dump trailer who's scared. Um, not scared, he's, he has a big ass dump trailer on like a half ton truck, it's crazy. And, uh, but yeah, we got that one tire fixed, the other ones are in. We also gotta get a set of tires for the trucks. Uh, I found a set, uh, I bought some, I always buy takeoffs, like KO2s is normally what I get, but there's not a chance of finding those right now where I live. Uh, I know down in the States, you guys might be able to find them everywhere, but up here in Canada, we're struggling like crazy to find truck tires. So, uh, plus they're like 2,500 bucks to get and install. So, 
I found a set of brand new takeoffs off a dealership. Now a lot of people here will upgrade their tires. Um, they don't like the highway tires up here in BC all that much. They like an all terrain because, uh, well, let's be honest, if you're going a truck up here, you're usually going off road with it. Um, whereas I do mostly highway and the odd chance I do a little bit of off road to go get some somewhere like drop off. Uh, so like the Transforce, uh, the Goodyear Wranglers and the freaking um, Firestones and Firestones, what are they? Uh, Discovery ATX or ATs, whatever they are. Those you can find for about 500 bucks for a set of brand new tires to use off the takeoffs. So I just buy those usually when I need tires, uh, especially lately. Like I can't find the tires and only run. Uh, I have no problem paying for them. It's just you just can't find them, and that's just the reality of the situation. Uh, and I need a set of tires. This is I have probably 8,000 kilometers left on this set uh, on the front tires. Might I add? I rotated them and the front tires are starting to get worn out and they're starting to have like they're at they're close to the wear mark they're not actually there yet i have, probably have like an eighth of an inch left but they're getting to the point where i start to change them and i know some people probably put another twenty thousand kilometers on these tires i'm not going to be doing that um <clears throat> so we're just going to find a set put them on the trailer tires should be here soon uh hopefully and we'll be golden nice to get nice 14 plies put on this trailer holy crap but there's no need for that like hold on is that that's not even a pickup what is that is that a jeep fuck off <laughs> no way what the fuck why are you doing that to that poor truck so this guy has a jk it's a four-door jk with a big rack on the back. I couldn't really see it because all you see is the roof and like a little bit of metal. So I thought maybe it was a truck with a headache rack. No, it's a cheap Wrangler uh, JK. Wow, uh, hauling a big dump trailer full of wood. So I guess if you gotta do what you gotta do, you gotta get it done. So crazy. Buddy, that's way too much weight for that. Uh, that Jeep. For a fact, I know that dump trailer probably weighs like 4,000 pounds on its own. And the Jeep's only rated for uh, 3,500. So, he's really pushing that Jeep to the limit. And he's lifted, I can tell, with bigger tires. So, I know for a fact that that lift kit's probably not rated for that weight. But, hey, to each its own. Uh, so, we're getting on the way here. We're going to get some stuff done. Uh, we just got a long drive ahead of us. And uh, I'll update you guys later and I'm also going to start the time lapse and uh, get us on the road. We'll see you in a bit. All right well good evening, good morning, good afternoon. I don't know where you're from. Um, it's late. It's 3.42 uh, Alberta time technically or mountain time. Uh, 2.42 my time. We're finally here. Uh, we're outside of a Flying J. Uh, well, we're at the scale house is where we stopped for the night. Uh, Flying J is over there. Uh, I was thinking of stopping in there, but I was told by a couple of people that not to stop there. You're not allowed to. They'll knock on your window and tell you like, hey, you need to move. Um, so we're, on, we're across the road at the scale house. Um, we got to get up in four and a half hours to go get loaded up. We have a bite to eat. We're gonna stop four hours, get loaded up, and then we're gonna stop again. Um, obviously, I can't legally drive. Uh, the tow yard we're picking up this truck from is right there, right at the scale house right behind us. So we're within our distance, we can drive to it and we get loaded. Um, we're gonna do that at 9 a.m., possibly 10. Um, we'll see what time I get out of bed. Yeah, and then we're gonna come back here, or maybe, uh, yeah, we'll probably come back here and stop for another four or five hours, get some sleep. Hit the road probably around noon and uh, start heading back to Kamloops. It's a, it was a fairly icy drive. Not too bad, though. I like driving at night when there's no traffic. Like, you're not stopping and going. You can be very fuel efficient. Uh, like, we did 12.2 uh, liters per hundred coming up here. Um, we drove... Uh, 933 kilometers, I think how much we drove today or a little bit more than that um not too bad 
12.2 is not great. Um, well, actually, it's actually really good for the winter. Um, normally, the, this truck and trailer with this stunt fall equipped is like 10 to 10 4. Um, but during the winter time, you know, you can only do so much. <laughs> so, yeah. So, we're going to sit here watching YouTube, eat my bagel, and uh, a little bit of decaf coffee and crash. And uh, we'll see you guys in the morning. I, I didn't do a time lapse, as you guys could probably tell. There wasn't one to the point of getting here because we literally hit nighttime within an hour and um, not much to see at night. Um, I'm thinking to, I don't know, I might get a different camera just to capture a nighttime time lapse, whereas the GoPro is good for daytime, but we'll see. But uh, we will definitely time lapse getting the truck and we'll time lapse getting back to the house. I uh, don't think I'm gonna drive all the way to Vancouver in one shot, so we'll see what we can do. Now, we'll see you guys in the morning. Bye bye. Good morning. So, today's gonna be a slow going day. Um, we're on Highway. I'm not sure what highway this is. Uh, we're leaving Dawson's Creek now. And, uh, well, what can I say? It is icy. Um, extremely icy uh, pretty much we got the truck loaded the best we could um, it ran and drove it didn't want to drive <laughs> uh, the tow truck yard that was supposed to um, help us load today uh, both of their trucks that were on duty were uh, off doing work on the highway because they, uh, the roads are just sheer ice so I said, no problem, we'll figure it out. So we got it started, and they said the front diff's fucked in it. It is. Also doesn't help that it's the two tires are completely off the beat and sitting on the side of the rims. Um, but we got loaded. Uh, backwards on the trailer, which means we're a little tail hop heavy, or maybe not, we're like 50-50, I would say. Most of the weight is over the axles. But uh, we're doing about 80 kilometers an hour in four wheel drive. We can't rear wheel drive only yet because we just end up sliding, uh, trying to get traction going up hills and stuff. So if we have to do 80 kilometers an hour to go up this until we get to Prince George when the roads clear up, it is what it is. So last night it snowed a little bit. I woke up this morning did a little bit of snow on the truck. So yeah. Hey, oh, destination home says you should be home in about. Uh, 9 p.m. tonight. It's 11 o'clock now, Alberta time. So 10 a.m. BC or um, PST time. So we should be at home, according to my GPS, in about 12 hours um, based on the speed that we're going. Uh, I'm not going to go any faster than 80. The roads are just sheer glazed ice. Um, they are ice. They're, there's no traction on it at all. Um, I can barely give the truck any throttle. Well, think about this. Normally a diesel likes to run 40 to 50% uh, throttle usage when pulling a trailer. Uh, I'm right now sitting at 31. That's the most I can about get out of it. I am I can't get any more power out of it because it just slides immediately. And I'm not the only one who's going super slow either. Uh, everyone here is doing about 80. Uh, the road conditions are just not ideal. I hate this so much. I don't know what the heck, why is this a problem? Um, but this year lately, it's like the roads have been absolute flaming hot piles of garbage. And I mean absolute trash. They've been nothing but sheer ice the whole time this winter without fail. Without fail. Now I understand, like, BC had a natural disaster and, you know, that Dawson has to settle out their employees into the right areas to open up the coke and open up highway one and highway three and highway 99 i get it i really do but uh <clears throat> this is the worst winter i would say i've experienced on these roads 99 percent of the winter time the roads are bad like you can cruise on them about 100 you're not gonna have a problem they're happier and shit, pig and shit doing it. Um, but this year, it seems like every road I've been on this year has just been pure ice. Like yesterday, I drove coming up here. 
the roads are clear because it was plus three. Uh, once we get over the mountain pass, it's warm again. On this side of the mountain pass, it's minus 16 right now. But uh, yeah, BC winters, like this is BC, but like it looks more like Alberta to be honest. So it's like, once we get over the mountain pass, we should be able to <clears throat> get some power down. But uh, yeah, as of right now, it's mostly just sheer ice. There's no salt or sand on the highway. It's just, hey, best of luck. And you know it's bad when the people behind me are not passing me. There, there's a guy in an all-wheel drive CRV behind me, and he's just happier, and he's happy to be back there. He's like, I'm not pushing it. Because he's probably the same thing I am, where the moment you put any power down, the truck just goes, ha, funny. So, yeah. We're going to head down the road. We're going to put gas in about 70 mile, 100 mile, one of the two. Uh, we'll see when we get there. But uh, just letting you guys update. I'll give you a video of the truck. Um, like right now. I'm not going to go out and do it right now. But when we stop for fuel, I will go and take a video and show you how bad this truck is. She was beat to death. <laughs> She was not a happy camper, but the guy only eats it from the mechanical stuff. <clears throat> we're gonna see what he does with it, but whatever. We're gonna take this down to Vancouver. We'll get there Saturday and we'll go from there. We'll see you guys later. Bye. So I told you I'd give you a video. I finally got my shit fixed. <clears throat> There's the truck. Oh, that wheel is kind of fucked, eh? That wheel is absolutely fucked. Now, same with the hood, that's fucked. Especially right there, that's fucked too. That's fucked three. That's fucked four. That's pretty fucked, <laughs> to say the least. That tire is locked in there, miraculously somehow. Okay, so, we're pulled over right now, because we're gonna have a bagel. We're gonna have some coffee. Uh, the roads must be getting really icy because everyone going this way, no four ways. Everyone going this way, four ways on. So I just started to the video of the truck. She had a big, she had a bump for sure. Not sure of what though, but a bump nonetheless. We got the load rebalanced. I'm a lot happier now. Pretty much at the back tire, straight up to the back gooseneck part of the uh or gooseneck the uh jack of the trailer and uh everything's chained back down i'm satisfied with the way it is i think it's perfectly safe and we're not gonna have an issue and we're just gonna hit the road again after this car um it's just sheer ice so it's gonna be a long tedious drive um i went on there with my feet i was like how bad can it actually be because I saw it and I was like, oh my God, I couldn't even walk on it. Like, that's how bad it is. It's insane. <clears throat> but, um, no, the, the roads right now are absolutely atrocious. Um, they're just, they're ice. Uh, that's why everyone's probably having their four ways on, driving slowly. That's why I'm gonna drive slowly. If someone doesn't like it, they can chew on my ass. Um, actually, I wonder if it's slippery right here. Well, it's not that bad right here. It's mostly where it's shiny. So I have to ride the center line of the road. Uh, it looks like there's, they're putting down dirt now. A plow just passed us, so it looks like he's putting down dirt. Oh boy, well this looks like it's gonna be fun. I just can't even touch all right now. We're going downhill. We're gonna turn tow haul mode off. I don't want it downshifting. Now, this truck has an engine brake and it has a uh, exhaust brake. Don't use exhaust brake on icy roads. Don't use engine brake on icy roads. I'm turning off tow haul mode because I don't want the engine to jump up RPMs to slow me down. I want to be able to control the brakes myself. On icy roads, I mostly let the trailer brakes control the whole lot. Um, just get to the point where it's almost getting when it's full, but then not. And then you just kind of feel it out. But um, we're on our way. It's gonna be slow going. We're gonna make progress. Um, I'm comfortable at 80 kilometers an hour on this. I'd probably go a little faster to be fair. I have really good winter tires. So I could go faster. 
um, but I'm not going to. No need to risk it. I'm not going to push. The customer wants delivery for tomorrow night. That gives us uh, almost 24 to 24 to 36 hours to drop off. Um, that's no big deal to me. Looks like we're driving into a bit of the shits because it's all blue clouds over there. Um, but we're going to take it easy. We're going to take it slow. Um, we're not going to have any accidents, hopefully. Um, we're just going to take it easy. That's what it is. That's all it's all about, guys. It really is. Don't worry about timing. Don't worry about all that stuff. When the roads are dangerous, you worry about yourself. Okay? The customer will be happy to have the load there late than not at all. And your insurance company will be happy for you to be there late than not at all and have a big claim. Because let's be honest, you think this bloke's gonna let me get away with, oh, I've only paid four grand for it because it was a write off. No, he's gonna go, that truck in value to me is worth this much in the market. Because it's based on what that truck is worth in the market, not based on what you paid for it. Because if it was based on what you paid for it, 37,000 bucks I'd get for this truck. But in reality, I'd get 50 plus. Actually, no, I have MSRP replacement on this truck. I, I just happened to sneak in that last year to get it. So I would, I would get like 90 something thousand bucks if I wrote this truck off. Oof. <laughs> um, no, I, I, car accidents don't help anyone. Uh, they sound great, like I guess. Some people love getting into them apparently. But uh, no, it, it fucks you up, it wrecks your record, and everything else like that. Um, but we're heading down the way. Uh, the truck started, I we had the boost the first time, uh, but it fired right up the second time. I just like, for chance and giggles, like, oh, let's see if it fires. Threw the key in and it fired right up. So the engine's good in that truck. And uh, she, the snaring is not so much. The track bar is a giant U. Um, or not the track bar, the steering linkage. Well, the track bar is also messed up, but uh, the steering linkage is uh, the drag link, I think they call it. No. Drag link's the one that goes from the pitman arm down to the axle. I think the tie rod is what goes to the other side. The tie rod is fucked. <laughs> that thing is a U. So when you turn the wheel, it turns, but it only turns this tire. Not so much this tire. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, take some time. So yeah, we're doing about 80. Uh, it's about 400 clicks to Prince George, so it's going to be a five hour drive to get to Prince George. I hope that we run into deep snow. Um, I hate driving on ice uh, like this. I prefer just to drive on deep snow, uh, like mountain passes that are covered in snow. That is the road for me. I like that. That's what my tires are maximally built for. They're not built for this crap. Well, they are. They can do ice. They say that, but that being fair, ice is so dangerous because it's so unpredictable that it's just like, you, you can't put power down, you can't do anything, you can't make any sudden movements, you can't control the vehicle. You're mostly just in a controlled crash, in essence, like drifting. You're in a control, lose, loss of control, right? Um, but yeah, we're gonna go nice and slow, take it easy. Uh, we'll probably get to Prince George around four o'clock, maybe, yeah, four o'clock BC time or PST, and uh, we'll go. I'll turn this camera around so you guys can have a look exactly what these roads look like. They are scary. Alright, I don't know if you can see it, but the black shininess is all ice. I can't get any power down. I have to literally drive into the ditch on this side to grab that compact snow in the corner of the ditch to get traction to climb hills because there's no traction on the center of the road. So you can see where it dries up. There's no ice here. But you can see where the shiny is. That's all ice. So... This is, uh, this is what this year has been like. Most of the roads have been like this. And I can tell you right now, if I didn't have a set of winter tires, I would not be driving on this. Because it's you, you can't stop on this crap, man. It's just like you just slide forever. You have to grab deep snow, which is why you see me riding the line. Because it's grabbing the snow and the center of the road is also uh, safe and sound. Like there's no ice on it. Like, well, I guess this section there's ice on it. But most of the places there isn't no ice, so we're just gonna keep going. We're gonna go slow, we're gonna go easy. Like I said, don't push. Always take your time. Don't let the customer push you. If you're gonna be late, just be late. Get home safely. You, know, you might have a wife, you might have kids, you might have a boyfriend, who knows? But either way, you all wanna get home. You wanna get home safely, and you wanna get the job done safely. And trust me, 
when the customers realize like when they see on the news and they say roads are absolute like bad don't drive absolutely do not drive road conditions are extremely dangerous and icy and everything else like that and they know you're on the road and then you get there they could they trust you you may be late but they trust you in the sense of like you're gonna get the load done now that being said if you're an 18 wheeler that's a little different when you're working with brokers uh, brokers are assholes at least 99 percent of them they're liars and they're assholes most of the time and so it's just the game they play they're trying to line their pockets as much as they're trying to you're trying to line yours like it's a it's a game of like who can get the most money out of what that's why when i deal with a broker i never take the first price i tell them nah you can come back with a better deal and usually i go up about a couple three four hundred bucks they usually come up so it's pretty good but uh yeah we're just gonna take this easy we're gonna take it slow uh it's your driver's license your insurance your reputation so don't take, don't risk it take your time i know some of you are are asking me in the comment section about learning how to hotshot and all this stuff and there's definitely gonna be a video coming out soon for that and uh, I look forward to meeting some of you guys maybe in the future who knows uh, I know one guy said he's from Summerland so that's cool uh, I've been to Summerland a few times now if we're talking about Kelowna um, but uh, yeah hot shotting is fun it's a great job it really is now hope you guys enjoy it see you later it happened it was a matter of time before it happened but it finally happened uh, for those who don't know what happened I blew a tire in a big way um, thankfully uh, I'm, I'm a good driver and I never panic like a lot of people do uh, when it comes to blowing a tire on the side of the road I saw it blow up I saw the smoke and the steam and uh, she went kaboom so we'll put a coat on we'll go have a look at this and show you guys what happened but uh we blew a tire she uh we just replaced one tire a 14 ply so we'll show you it's funny uh it's gonna be awkward because i'm never i'm not really comfortable with filming out in a parking lot but oh well i was gonna know who i am it is 4k60 so we just replaced this tire it's a 14 ply this is a 10 ply it sucks the 14 ply is the side that the tire blew on so we walk over here there she is. Way blew her. She got too hot. We put too much pressure on it. I think it blew the sidewall out. Um, so it is what it is. And this one is pretty much on its way out too. So I'll turn around. So right now we have someone on the way from Cal Tire. They're, they're hooking us up. Uh, for under a thousand bucks, we're getting all tires changed uh, remotely, which is the same price I paid but 322 is what I paid to have the tires done um, in Kamloops for the one. So they're not charging me to come out and do it, which is fantastic. Um, but it just sucks because now we're we're dead on the side of the road here. They're going to call me back to confirm it. Uh, thank God we have a company account. We can actually use their commercial services. Um, so thank God we got that set up recently or else that would have been a whole headache. Um, it's gonna be a thousand dollar bill. <laughs> Fuck, that hurts so much. Oh, it's so bad. Oh well, I gotta give Don a call anyways. Um, tell him like, hey, the electric's not working anyways. And we just blew a tire. Another one, yay. So, yeah, we're gonna get this ready. Once they call and confirm that someone's on the way, we will, um, they never grabbed the address, by the way, where, where I'm at. So I don't know, like, I think they're just gonna get ready to go and they're grabbing three of the tires. Uh, yeah, it's funny, the girl's like, we're gonna send him with two. <laughs> it's like, why? <laughs> but then she explained to me that nine times out of 10, when he's following you back, you'll blow another one. Uh, so that's kind of what made me change out all of them because like, story of the truth is like, I absolutely know that, you know, don't run 10 plies with 14 plies because you too put too much pressure. But you know, when you're yourself in business, you're trying to make your company successful, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do to save money, right? And if I can get another job or two out of a set of tires uh, and just have one 14 ply and the other 10 ply and save myself the headache of replacing the tires and trying to find a deal like when you're starting out it's all about hunting down the discount right it's all about hunting down the deal but i did that it was a mistake 
it will be one I will never make again. It's also the first time I ever used 10 plies on a trailer. Normally I swap them out immediately. <laughs> like I just throw them on as a spare, the 10 plies, but oh well, <clears throat> it is what it is. It was safe, it was sound. Um, thankfully, when we blew, it didn't shake the trailer about. I saw a blow, so I kind of held the trailer brake a little bit, but we'll get there. We'll see what it is. Hey, -oh. well, we'll see you guys when Caltar gets here. All right. Just heard back from Cal Tire. We have an hour and a half wait. <laughs> um, because, uh, well, obviously uh, they are in a small town. They do offer commercial services. However, um, there's one guy doing all the repairs. So he's just doing a, a flat tire repair at a, on a big rig at the moment. He says it take about 20 more minutes. Um, they have them on radio, so it's kind of cool. I heard them on the radio. But, uh, apparently this is really messed up okay google maps says i'm in the brake check north pine area this is what it's called this pull out and i was like north I was like i'm not in the north i'm in east this sign beside me says i just rolled up so this sign beside me says east pine rest area but on google maps this is known as the north pine rest area We're east. We're the east. East. <laughs> north is that way. That way's north. So, I don't know. It is what it is. But, um, we're pretty much just going to chill here. We're turn on some Netflix. We have 5G here, so we're all good. It's funny, these. I love that guy's truck. Oh, I cannot wait to get into an 18 wheeler. Or not, I want a tri axle Peterbilt all day every day i'm so excited to get into one like i'm saving up the money i'm gonna make sure i buy one outright for probably like 30 grand and then uh oh i can't wait to, i want to do heavy hauls like i mean i want to do stress shit i want to have gray hair by the time i turn 40. <laughs> but uh yeah so they're on their way they're getting done and uh they they're bringing four tires in case one's a fault i guess but uh they're hooking us up so it's like fan fucking tastic I'm happy about it. We're gonna get on the road again soon. In a couple hours, probably about two o'clock, we'll get back on the road. Just a convenient place to blow a tire, I guess. We'll see you guys in a little bit. I'll keep you updated as we go. Bye-bye. All right, we're on the road again. Oh, I need to adjust this. We're finally on the go. Uh, it's five o'clock. We finally got all four tires changed. That was a nightmare situation. So I don't know if I explained it in the last video. Oh, well, don't mind if I do go straight here. Um, so we got the tires. We had to get another shop. 200 and something bucks, I think that was. How much was that? Uh, 245.85 to bring me out a tire um, to get my trailer here because they didn't have the tires in stock to change them on the side of the road there. So. They came with a tire because the other shop mechanic uh, hurt himself by crushing his hand in the hood of a truck. So um, he wasn't able to come out and do the tire service. So I ended up having to get another shop, which charged me the $245 to bring a tire out to me, which then, uh, had then I went to Cal Tire, got three new tires uh, because all of them were bad. Um, none of them were savable. So all the tires were shot. He showed me uh, the tires were good when I checked them this morning. But I guess whatever the fuck happened, I don't know. Um, he showed me all the wires starting to poke through the rubber. And uh, that all the tires clearly have failed. Uh, none of them. He said I would have been lucky if I got another 100 clicks out of all these tires. So, and he showed me, like, I thought it was bullshit at first. But he showed me them and he was absolutely right so the, the rubber was splitting and the, the wire was starting to come through so for whatever reason these tires are not even three months old so whatever you get what you get when you put chinese tires on i didn't pay for them that came with the trailer i was planning to put 14 plies on it anyway so just a little more accelerated timing uh, unfortunately it was an expensive day so that was a i'd say almost 1100 dollars that just cost us to get the three tires done plus to get the extra. Now we're gonna go drop this uh, 
extra tire off that we got lent uh, by these guys. They were super awesome. They let me keep the tire until the Cal Tire got these tires finished. So we're just gonna go drop them off. They closed eight minutes ago, but they told me just leave it in front of the bay. So I'm just coming right now. Chances are someone's gonna leave and realize, oh, he's here, he's actually dropping it off. Uh, we'll take a photo and everything. And uh, <clears throat> You guys just want me to leave the tire there in front of bay? In front of Okay. Thank you. So that was the owner of that this tire shop. He just uh tell me where to put it. He doesn't want to open up a shop. Well he just leaves a bunch of tires out here. Look, there's a bunch of brand new tires here. So not much crime in this area apparently. Um but anyhow we gotta get this trailer or this tire offloaded. And then we will uh, get back on the road. Hopefully we get somewhere tonight. Uh, Quinell would be nice. Because <laughs> uh, we're running out of logbook now. So, we'll see you in a minute. <sighs> Alright. This day is almost over. <sighs> Whatever. We got the tires fixed. Shouldn't have any more problems. Uh, these tires are awesome. So, I've had these on other trailers. They've never let me down. Um, actually, I don't think I've even worn them out. I think I've always just sold the trailer before the tires ever need to be changed. Okay, calm down, Seatbelt. You're so much. Oh, Jesus. You're like the Conservative Party of Canada emailing me every fucking day. <laughs> you become a good donor and all of a sudden it's like, they want to talk to you constantly. Like, shut up, man. Like, leave me alone. <laughs> but, um, yeah. We're running out of daylight, so we're going to be going over to Dawson Creek Pass. I don't know if that's actually what it's called, by the way. I just call it that myself. Uh, we're going over that pass. Um, yeah, we're just going to go over that pass at night. Again, I love doing this. I love doing this job, but man, there's some days where you just get kicked in the fucking balls. And you just need to keep going. So, these days exist. Just to give you a heads up. These days are going to happen to you. Not if, when, okay? You need to understand that you need to keep going. These days are gonna hurt. This is why you need to have an nest egg. You cannot get into this business without having funds in the bank or a good credit card. Like if you have a $2,500 limit credit card for the business, that's perfect. Like that's really all you need. Anything more major than that, like I don't want to tell you, you're pretty much fucked. You blow an engine or anything like that, you're pretty much SOL'd. Well. Um, a blown engine or a broken transmission could definitely break your company for sure um, just take care of your equipment and you won't have these issues um, so I don't know what to say man it's going to be a long night she's gonna be a long night so we have corn logbook I just checked it now uh, we have seven hours left on our logbook I think we're about six and a half to seven hours from home so we we could probably use the home base advantage thing and get home um the sad part is it's we're not going to get home till like midnight one o'clock maybe even later so we're going to do what we have to do we're going to go grab ourselves a nice cup of coffee medium double double and hit the road take a piss and just get this day over with uh, that hurt a lot uh, <laughs> uh, significantly like that 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 took a dent in the bank account especially for the fact that I still have to spend almost two thousand dollars on tires still for the truck so I'll give you the actual breakdown of what that cost total um, unfortunately like that's why I said you need a nest egg boys and girls you're not gonna survive this business without one and if you can't take a hit like a couple thousand dollars in one shot, don't bother hot shotting. Like I said, a lot of you guys are in the comment section saying you want to get into it. These are the realities of the situation. Uh, trucks are expensive, uh, gear is expensive, tools are expensive. Just this job in general is expensive. It's not cheap, it's not free, and it's just gonna break the fucking bank most of the time. And you're gonna get upset, you're gonna get frustrated. These are the things that are going to happen, okay? So, 
one, we lost a bunch of time today. So for the trip, for the spare tire to come out, why don't I have a spare? I ordered one, hasn't come in yet. Sorry, okay, sue me. Um, 245.85 was our invoice for the, just to get a guy out there. So it's call out during hours, 20, 75 bucks. Light truck rotate, uh, 15 bucks, which means like uh, change a tire out kind of thing. Uh, service call KMS compressor truck 22 at $1.85, okay? <clears throat> that came out at 129 bucks. So 80, 70 kilometers came out to 129.50, okay? Retorque after 100 kilometers, it's funny. Um, now for the other one, okay? We have three ST23580 R16 14 ply tire, tires, um, as well as a deposit fee, because uh, each tire is five bucks deposit um, in order to recycle them or something like that, I don't know. Utility changeover. Now what that means is that that's the price to change a trailer tire or a utility trailer tire or something like that. <clears throat> now it says wheels must be retightened at the earliest of next business days or 50 kilometers, whichever comes first. We'll pull over at a mountain pass. I have a torque wrench, we'll do it. That came up to grand total of $282.47. So the grand total for today, if my math is somewhat correct, is uh, 1,100, so 1,127, give or take, 1,128 something. Um, so that's in one day. Boom, right there. Now those don't happen all the time, unfortunately. Uh, unfortunately, fortunately those don't happen all the time. But we now have no time, no hours. We have a long day and I don't push. So if I get tired, I'm just gonna pull over. But I um, just wanna show you guys the reality of what happens in this industry. And that's something that can happen, okay? I have spent probably on this company truck so far close to five or six thousand dollars just in maintenance alone of just repairs and maintenance. So again, if you're getting into this thinking you're gonna do this part time and oh I'm only gonna do this to make a couple thousand bucks, don't bother. You're gonna spend more than that just in maintenance. Because trucks don't care. They just break down when they feel like breaking down. It is what it is. Yeah, I'm gonna go get my coffee. We're gonna hit the road. Enjoy the time lapse and I'm gonna die. Bye-bye. <laughs>